Hey gamers, Maniac here with GameAccess.net with a new Tales from IT. Um, I'm going to tell a bit of a personal story here, um, although this is not like an embarrassing story by any means. I know sometimes I might consider telling them, but this is not anything like that. Um, my father had a very good friend um, many years ago. He worked with him on several different projects. Uh, sometimes he did uh, teaching and things like that. And um, he was a very, overall, he was a very good man. He was a husband. He was a father. He was also disabled. I believe he had uh, diabetes. He had problems with mobility. Uh, but he was a disabled senior citizen. And again, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. He was a good guy. He always treated me with respect. He always treated my father with respect, always helped my dad out with projects. And every once in a while, before I started working full time, when I was doing private IT work, he would ask my assistants for things. This was a guy who was very much into home automation. Just when it was starting to really take off. At this moment in time, this guy had been interested in setting up things like wireless, uh, home switches, light switches, thermostats, um, that sort of stuff, basically. Now, nowadays, we kind of take a lot of that stuff for granted. For him, he very much got into it very early, and there were consequences for how early he got into it. And I'm going to get into that in just a second. But for him, it was very much of a necessity because he was disabled. He couldn't just simply get up and turn on or turn off a switch easily. He could, but it would be a bit of a, it would be difficult for him to do so. So before I even met him, he had already set up a bit of a home network, a home automation network, I should say. Um, where he was controlling all of um, a lot of the switches and a lot of his thermostats on his iPad. And that was as far as he'd gotten at that point before he met me. However, there were problems. The switches, thermostat, and everything else that he already had wired into his house that he didn't want to have to rewire were not Wi-Fi enabled smart switches. These were physical switches, but they had a wireless protocol on them that was proprietary. I think it was the ZigBee or Z-Wave or something along those lines. I can't, don't quote me exactly on what it was. Now, those kind of switches are no big deal. They're, but the thing is, is that they don't interface directly with a Wi-Fi you have to have some kind of home hub, a wireless home hub, in order to interpret those protocols. And that hub has to be set up to communicate with whatever devices that you're going to be using to communicate with it. Before I had even met him, he had he was using, I think, some Lowe's, and I'll say it was a service or something like that. He had some home automation device. I can't remember how much he paid for it. But like with anything, it was relying on a central server. And I don't know when he installed these things. I don't know when he installed this hub. But Lowe's didn't want to maintain that server anymore. They just decided unilaterally or whoever it was that was maintaining it. Again, I think it was Lowe's. That they did not want to take people's money anymore to run this home automation service that they had set up. That was reliant and completely on them. And I think he had gotten like a 30 or 60 day notice of termination. Now... Again, that meant he no longer had to pay for the service, but it also meant that now all of his devices were back to being physical. And all of the automation that he had set up for his, just his tablet alone would cease to function after that deadline. And he was in trouble for that. He, he, was, he was concerned about what his options were going to be. So, he called me up, and he said, look, this is the, this is the, this is the skinny. 
I need to find something that will work with these protocols. I need to move all these devices, and he had at least a dozen of them, onto this new pro onto the onto something else. He's like, I I'm assuming I'm gonna have to buy a new hub. That's fine. So charge me for a new hub, or we'll buy you know. But obviously, you know, we're not gonna go crazy. What are your recommendations? Now, I had not gone into very far into the home automation work at that moment, to be perfectly honest with you. The farthest I had gone for home automation processes was for things like um, Amazon speakers or Amazon screens and stuff like that. Basically working with devices that intentionally were Wi-Fi direct. You'd get the device, you would connect it to your Wi-Fi using an app, and then you would interface it with the Amazon or whatever voice assistant that you were using in your house. I had not worked with Z-Wave or Zigbee or anything like that before, so I didn't know about these middleman protocols. No more was I 100% certain on um, if I could even get these devices to migrate. But I was willing to give it a shot. So I went online, and for $100, I found an independent router that worked on both Z-Wave and Zigbee. And basically it worked on a couple of different home automation protocols. The intention was it had to be used to connect, um, you had to connect it uh, to, the, to your router. It was like a, it wasn't a US, it wasn't like a USB hub or a network hub, but it very much functioned aesthetically like one. The only difference is, is that it's wireless protocols were meant for the Zigbee or the Z-Wave, whatever. So, before the low service shut down, I had this hub come on order. I think he paid $100 for it. It was more expensive than he, I think he said he paid for his previous router. He paid $60 for that hub. And he, um, I think he had to pay like a certain amount of contract for whatever it was per month to maintain it. This hub did not require anything like that. It was just $100 flat. And while it did have a third-party application, there was no fee to use it. And after I checked the protocols on it, after I hooked it into his network, I discovered this thing was completely uh, independent function. And, you know, there, it wasn't relying on a, central, on a central server. It acted very much like some type of independent router switch kind of thing. Um, so if anything happened to the service... As long as we set everything up, it should be it should have been able to continue to function. So, I get the I get the routers uh, installed. I set up an application on his on his uh, phone and as his iPad. At the same time, I also wanted to invest in getting him some Amazon speakers, as well as some cameras for the outside of his house. You see. This guy also had not really dealt with things like ring cameras or nest cameras or anything like that. And for somebody I felt that was immobile, handicapped, I figured it would be pretty useful for him to have some things like back, backyard cameras, doorbell cameras, that's, you know, garage cameras, that sort of thing. And he very much liked this idea, especially when I told him we could control everything either from your iPad, which you already had, or, you know, if I, I said I can install some smart speakers in the house, or some smart speakers in the house, and then we can add the functionality to those as well. So I told him you could, let's say, if I can make this all work, I could, let's say, you could just say the words, oh, you know, turn on this light, show me this camera, that sort of thing. Things, can I be honest with you, things we now take for granted but this for him was very much a necessity, and this was very much, in, again, in the early phases of that happening. So he's like, all right, we bought a few cameras. We bought the hub. We bought the speakers. All of it shipped in. First thing I did was I programmed the speakers. My dad was good enough to install all of the uh, cameras. Once we had that installed, we, I, I programmed the, the, the cameras and the, uh, I programmed the cameras next. I also set him up for the cloud service so that he could do that. He was fine to pay for that. So, camera set up, speaker set up. Now we got to move his switches over. 
it took me, this was the thing that took the longest time, not because the hub was a problem, but because all the switches had to pair very much similar to Bluetooth. There was a trick to the, to the switches themselves to get them out of, basically what I had to do was one at a time I had to unpair the switch. Basically, I think, I think for these switches, what you had to do is you had to like flip them on and off and on and off and on and off and on and off for like 30 seconds or something like that. That was to unpair it to the existing hub. And then I could put the new hub into pairing mode and then that would pick up the switch. And I had to do this at least a dozen times to connect everything, all the switches, all the, um, all the, and the thermostat. That was, again, that was the most difficult thing. But when that was done, I connected his hub accounts, you know, the, the new hub over to his smart speakers, including his tablet and integrated all of it together. Now, all he had to do was say a word, lights on, lights off. Now, why am I telling this story? Why is it, why is, why am I so beat up by this story right now? He passed. May he rest in peace. He did, he passed a couple, uh, he, he didn't pass recently. Again, I held off telling the story for a bit. Um, he passed, uh, a, a few, at least a few months ago. It feels like it was, uh, it feels like it wasn't too long ago, but actually he might've passed, uh, a little bit longer than that, but he passed. And, um, there was one other thing that he really liked and that was 3D TV. He was one of the early adopters of 3D television back when it was, uh, for like, high definition 3D Blu-ray and stuff like that. He was very much into that. He went out and he bought a brand new 3D TV when they were available. He got a really big screen. He hooked it up for 3D service through like I think at the time ESPN had a 3D channel and they had X games on it in 3D. Um and also 3D Blu-ray with the 3D glasses and he was very very excited about that. He was really bummed when they started discontinuing those 3D services. Like um, ESPN, you know, 3D shut down many years ago. It never really took off. It never really had the, the, the popularity. And there really wasn't too much content for it. Basically, they just, you know, cycle between old X Games footage and old golf foot tournaments and stuff like that that had been recorded. And looking back on it, I'm going to be honest with you. One thing that I think this man would have loved more than anything was probably something that he didn't live to see, and that was the Vision Pro. I mentioned in the video, in this video, that the, the guy would always have that iPad with him, and I remember him saying to me that he was very, it was very useful for him to have the voice commands, but the iPad was, was pretty useful because he could always carry that with him or could always have that on his couch with him. And if anything happened, it was easy for him to pull that out and to, you know, turn on things like the monitor. He said if he had to go to the speaker, he could talk to the speaker. But if he had to do something with the speaker, like touch the speaker, he said it was, that was a little too cumbersome for him. If he had a Vision Pro, he, I could have installed all those apps right on his Vision Pro for him. And he would have had all 3D content he could have wanted. That's just something that I was speaking about. I know there were a lot of people that were talking about lack of use cases for the Vision Pro for VR headsets in general. I mean, I've watched full 3D movies from this couch in a room that has no television because it doesn't have room for a television, doesn't have space for it, doesn't have the hookups for a television. And yet I've watched IMAX films at IMAX quality as if I was in an IMAX theater down here in surround sound and everything else. He would have loved that. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video. Until next time, guys, my name is Maniac with GameAccess.net. Take care. Over and out.